wakati nilichua mimi niko na TV ilikuwa usiku nikatapika tamu nikaenda hospitali nikapimwa nikapatikana niko na TV daktari akanipea tawa kamesa hiyo tawa nikamaliza nikapona nikaendelea na kazi yangu hapo niambia nirute nilimesa madawa siku ya muta ya wiki mbili nikajihisi mwili yangu sio mbaya ndio nikaendelea na kazi mpaka mwaka wa 2011 na moja nikarudi hospitalini nikaambiwa oh umerudi tukaambiwa nyinyi mlikataa kukula madawa Elimination of tuberculosis is one of Kenyan government's key health priorities. According to Ministry of Health, TB contributes to 6.5% of deaths, making it the fourth largest cause of mortality in Kenya. TB is airborne. As a result, measures have been taken to prevent the spread. The government through the Ministry of Health introduced corrective measures to TB patients who interrupt their treatment. According to Section 27 of the Public Health Act, the medical officer may isolate a TB patient until he is free from infection or can be discharged without danger to the public health. In line with the Act, there have been over 10 arrests and imprisonments of TB patients for allegedly interrupting their treatment. In August 2010, Mr. Daniel Nyetich, Mr. Henry Ngetich and Mr. Patrick Kip Ngetich Kirui were arrested on the basis of the fact that they had severely interrupted their periodical prescribed medical treatment. Tukafanyiwa kesi. Wa vilikeli wakaamwa isi watu wafungwe. Hii room ambao huo tunalala ni lazima watu 20 walale. Kellen came up with a campaign dubbed TB is not a crime. The campaign objectives were to create publicity about the case in court where the patients were imprisoned for failure to adhere to TB treatment. The campaign was also advocating for creating of proper systems that facilitate adherence to treatment and that TB patients be treated without stigmatization. The TB is not a crime campaign organized by Kelin just to sensitize communities around issues of TB. This came about as a result of the rights of uh, TB patients being violated uh, due to the fact that they are not able to adhere to their uh, TB medication. The objectives of this campaign was to raise awareness of the TB patients and uh, also um, to encourage the TB patients to be able to adhere to their TB medication so that they do not put the lives of their loved ones uh, and the other members of the community at risk because of the infectiousness nature of uh, TB as a disease. In partnership with other civil society organizations, Kelly embarked on advocacy campaigns to condemn the arrest and imprisonment of the TB patients based on Section 27 of the Public Health Act. We are also raising awareness of the fact that um, you know there are challenges that TB patients face at the communities and also at the health facility level that make them not be able to adhere to their medication. So these challenges need to be addressed both at community and at facility level so that they are able to adhere to their medication. A constitutional petition filed by Kellen on behalf of Daniel Ngetich and Patrick Kim Ngetich Kirui sought to challenge the widespread practice adopted by public health officers of seeking court orders to confine TB patients in prison for purposes of treatment. This is because in implementing the practice of involuntary confining TB patients, the public health officers go against the principles of human rights, including human dignity. This confinement goes on despite the fact that our prisons are overcrowded and poorly ventilated, making it conducive for the spread of TB. The Prisons Act does not provide for isolation facilities for TB patients. Holding TB patients in prison not only puts a risk to the other prisoners, but to the prison wardens and their family members. It also defeats the very aim the health officers seek to achieve of protecting the public from persons with infectious diseases.
we are telling the government that prison is not the best place of isolating TB patients or those who have challenges in adhering to their medications. On the 24th of March 2016, World Tuberculosis Day, a judgment was made in favor of Daniel and Patrick. The court directed that the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Health, issue a circular to all public and private medical facilities and public health offices, clarifying that they do not authorize the confinement of persons suffering from infectious diseases in prison facilities for the purposes of treatment. The petitioners argue that the use of the provisions of the Act to have them sent to prison amounts to a violation of their constitutional rights including the right to dignity, the right to freedom from torture and other cruel and degrading treatment, and the right to freedom of movement. The Cabinet Secretary was also directed to develop a policy on the involuntary confinement of persons with TB and other infectious diseases that is compliant with the Constitution and that incorporates principles from the international guidance on the involuntary confinement of individuals with TB and other infectious diseases. Helen won the case, and that one has a lot of positive impact on us. On the 12th of May 2016, the Ministry of Health, in compliance with the court order, issued a circular to the effect that confinement of patients suffering from infectious diseases for purposes of treatment shall not be done in prison facilities. It is because of the case that future isolations will be handled in a patient-centered manner that respects human rights and a channel for dialogue on how to achieve a rights-based approach to TB prevention, treatment and management has been opened.